Hey guys, Reese Zaka here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Today we're going to be mixing a song from start to finish and it's a bit of an indie bop. Now it's a pretty fun one. I'm going to show you everything from session prep to routing, sends. We're going to do drum mixing, bass. We've got electric guitars. We've got some lead guitars and we've got a glockenspiel in there. We've got lead vocals, backing vocals, harmonies, a bunch of stuff. It's going to be pretty fun. If you guys are interested in mixing along with me and having a little bit of a practice doing this stuff, there's a link below to where you can buy the multi-tracks and you can join me in mixing this along with the video. These are just multi-track WAV files and they'll work in any DAW. So you can just drag and drop them in and away you go. So a little bit of backstory on the track that we're going to be working on today. I recorded this one back in about 2009. So this is one of my very first band recordings. Now, the reason I've chosen this production as one for us to do a little bit of a mix along with, besides the fact it's fun to go back and working on something that I did so long ago, it's also gonna have challenges because it was recorded in a not so great environment. There's phase issues in the guitars, there's phase issues in the drums, there's just issues throughout the tracks because they weren't recorded in a great space and the knowledge that I had at the time was not as much as I have now. So it's gonna be a good one in showing you how to fix some issues because a lot of the stuff when we watch mix tutorials, it already sounds pretty great. And that's because these guys have been doing it for so long. You know, over time you build up great preamps, you get really nice mics and you work in a better space. And all of a sudden your tracks start to sound better from the get go and you're fixing less in the mix. So we've chosen a track where we're gonna to have to fix some stuff because sometimes you're gonna get sent tracks by clients and you have no idea how these were recorded and they may have been recorded in a not so great space and there may be issues with phase and problems like that that need addressing before you start mixing. The song's called Skipping Stones and it's by a band called The Play Tapes. Now I played in this band for a few years but I wasn't in the band at the time when they recorded this song. So let's dive into this and let's go set up our session and get it ready for mixing. So before we do any mixing, we're gonna do some session prep. We're gonna drag our tracks in, we're gonna arrange them, we're gonna find any issues and try and fix them before we get going. So open up your DAW, start a blank project, and we're gonna drag our tracks in. Now before we drag them in, make sure that your sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz, and our tempo is 150 BPM. Now we're ready to get our tracks. Let's grab these, drag them in, create new tracks. All right, looking good. So what we're gonna do first is just arrange this. So let's find all of our drums. Got some toms, samples, toms, tambourine, snare, snare samples, room, overheads, kick, hi-hats. Drag these to the top because drums go at the top. I don't understand people who put vocals at the top and drums down the bottom. What is wrong with you? So the way I like to arrange it is kick, snare, toms, cymbals, room mics. So let's get our kick. We've got a kick sample. Now let's find our snare. Now there is no snare bottom mic on this. So this is some of the stuff that I'm talking about. When this was recorded, I had minimal gear. I had a pre-Sonus Fire Studio with eight channels. So we've got no kick out, we've got no snare bottom, and we've only got a mono room mic. So there's minimal drum tracks to work with here. And that's why leading into this, I've put some samples in. All right, and then we've got our toms, put these under the snare, followed up with hi-hats overheads and room. So that's looking good. And our tambourine down the bottom. We've got our bass DI and bass cab. So I like to do drums bass. Now we're gonna find our rhythm guitars. So we've got guitar left and guitar right. And you can see there's three mics on the guitar here. So I was being a bit adventurous on the day when I was tracking the guitars. And that is why we'll find later that there is some phase issues in these tracks, but we can fix that. What else have we got? We've got strums. So let's take these strums. Let's drag these up and put them underneath our rhythm guitars. Then we have our dreamy guitar, which is just kind of some delayed reverby kind of strums. Lead and a riff. So kind of like two lead guitar tracks here. All right, then we've got a glockenspiel, which is pretty fun. So we're gonna put that down the bottom here underneath our lead guitars. Vocals, followed up with harmonies and our backing vocals, one, two, three, four. So that's arranged nicely now. Let's get this all sorted, color coded, into sends groups and get it ready for mixing. So to start with, let's come back to our drums and let's send our kicks into bus one. Let's send all of our snare tracks into bus two, all of our toms into bus three, hats, overheads into bus four, room mic, we don't need to send that anywhere because it's just a mono room mic. So we'll just keep that as is. Come over to our tracks over here, bus one. We're gonna label this kick sum. Next one, snare sum, toms sum, 
which is called the symbols. Now we're going to highlight all of those, right click, create track. Okay, now we've got our tracks in the global window here, our sends. We're going to put our kick above our kick, snare above our snare, toms above our toms, symbols above our hi-hats and overheads. Now we're going to get our tambourine all the way up to our kick sum. Hold down shift and click and highlight them. Now we're going to right click this and create track stack. So it's going to put all of this into a little folder for us. So we're going to create a summing stack and then we're going to label this one drums. And that is our drum bus. Now, while we're at it, let's set up another send here for our parallel compression, which we're going to use a bit later. We might even send up two sends here. So on all of our buses and our room bus here, I'm not going to worry about the tambourine. We're going to send these to bus six, which call this one crusher. That's what I like to call my parallel compression, create track stack, and that's shown up here. What I like to do is just drag it out the top and drag it back into the folder. And then it just makes sure that that send is now going into bus five, which is our drum bus. Sometimes when you just click create track, it still just says stereo out. So you have to make sure it's going back into our drum bus here. Now let's make another one. So highlight the same tracks again. Let's do bus seven. We'll call this one crunch because we might do like some some saturation or distortion in parallel. Right click that, create track, and then same deal, drag it out, drag it back in. Okay, so now I've got two buses there for some fun parallel processing later, and our drums are all set up there, looking good. Now let's highlight our drums and pick a color for them. I always like to just do like a pink kind of color, and I just work my way across and color the tracks this way. So click on them out here, put the same color. And to make this even easier to just look at at a glance, I'm going to add some images to these channel strips here. Okay, so drums are looking good. Let's do the same for bass. Let's highlight both of our bass tracks, create a track stack. Let's put an image of this stuff. Let's give it a color. We're just going to get our main rhythm tracks and create a track stack for them. And then we're going to get a, another track for our strums and dreamy guitar. We might just put them in a track stack. And then our lead guitars, we'll put them in a track stack. And our glockenspiels in a track stack. Vocals and harmonies in a track stack. And our backing vocals in a track stack. Now let's just go back and label all of these and color code them. Let's give these some images so we can associate with them easily. Now let's set up our mix bus. So we need to change the output of all of our track stacks to a mix bus. So we don't want them going to the stereo out. We want them to be going to a separate bus where the whole mix is going to be meeting up. So let's highlight our track stacks. Anywhere it says stereo out, grab a hold of it. And then let's change the output to bus 32. I just like to use the last bus for the mix bus. Now let's label this mix bus. I like to make it red so it's really easy to see. So the cool thing about track stacks in Logic is you can collapse these and you can just focus on one thing at a time if you feel like seeing all those tracks is a bit overwhelming. And if you're working in a different DAW, just make sure you're sending your tracks to groups so that you can process the group sound as well as the individual tracks. Now I have to make a send off my mix bus so that anything that I do, you guys can hear because I need to send it out of the session into a different thing to record the audio. So if you see that on the mix bus, it's nothing you have to worry about. I'm just doing it to capture the audio for the video. Now I'm just going to also add a trim to the mix bus so that if anything's coming in too hot, you guys aren't going to get blasted by it. So I'm just going to put VMR on here. Usually I have something like the, the Brit 4K E and then just a trim and I'll pull it back around like 6 dB just to make sure we never get too hot on the mix bus. Okay, you guys should have some audio now when I play tracks in here. So let's just turn everything down a little bit. So grab all our individual tracks, just leave the buses where they are. Have a quick listen to what we're working on and then we're gonna set our faders to zero, go through, set some levels and then we're gonna fix any issues that we find. All right, so not very pretty at the moment. It's a bit messy, mono, yuck. All right, but we're gonna make this sound cool. So let's just set everything to zero, get some levels, some panning, and fix our phase problems. All right, let's bring in our sample. Let's bring up our snare. Sample. Room sound, another sample. Snare bottom. That sounds kind of cool. Let's bring these toms in. P. 
pan these out a bit. Bring in the samples. Bring them all down a bit. Let's bring in the overheads, hard pan left and right. You can hear they're a bit roomy sounding. So the spaces we recorded in was like a large downstairs living room with a tiled floor and brick walls and there was pretty minimal treatment in the room. So they don't sound too bad. A bit of liveliness actually kind of sounds a bit cool. Bring in the room mic. It's pretty bitey, a bit dirty sounding. All right, where's our tambourine? Pan it the opposite direction to our hi-hat. Bring everything down as such. Drum bus is looking good. Let's bring in the bass. Let's check the phase on these two. Let's have a zoom in, make sure they're in phase. They sound pretty good. That looks pretty good. There's no cancellation when they're together. Let's just get a bit of a blend between the DI and the cab. I like the bite of the DI. This is a Music Man Stingray bass. Now let's check out these electric guitars. They have three mics for each guitar. So let's see what we got going on here. Let's bring up mic one. Ooh, phasey. It's not as bad. Hear that? That's filter combing. So those two sounds are canceling out frequencies within each other when they are played together. Now, this is probably just gonna be a simple shift and drag the audio file over to line them up. I'd say there's two mics on the cab, one was a bit further back and it wasn't fixed in post. Now the reason being, cause when I tracked this, I didn't really know much about phase back then. Let's find the start of a hit on the guitar, like here. Let's zoom in, boost up our wave file here. Let's have a look at this. It's like staggered, one, two, three, goodness me. Okay, so we're probably just gonna need to trim off the start here so we can drag these over. So get rid of that. Okay, let's drag this over. That looks good. Look at these, they're all lining up now. Let's drag this one over. That looks pretty good. You can see these peaks are lining up. Looking good. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like now when we blend them together. Way better. This third mic sounds a bit roomy, so maybe this one was quite far back from the, the guitar amp. I'm liking mic one the most, so I think we're gonna blend a little bit of mic two in. Seems to warm it up a little bit. I like that little bit of presence that Mic 3 is bringing in. So we're just gonna bring a little bit extra of that in. Now let's fix up Guitar 2. It's probably got the same issues going on. Okay, so let's set the same levels for these and let's hard pan these out and have a listen to what we got going on. Let's have a look at what's going on with these strums over here. I dare say all of the guitars are gonna have phase issues. So let's just fix these now before we go any further. I've just trimmed the start off so I can drag these back because it was at the start of the session and it wasn't letting me move the tracks back when I wanted to drag them into phase. So zooming in, yes, we can see the same deal. So I reckon we could almost highlight every second mic and drag these over. We'll see if the mics we used on the same guitar amp and this lines up properly. Let's grab all the mic threes, drag these over. Looking good. Let's have a look how the phase lines up on our dreamy guitar. Nailed it, looks good, all right. Let's have a look at our lead guitar. Nailed it, all right, looking good. So these are all the same guitar amp, same mic placement. We've just sorted that a lot quicker than doing it individually. Now we can just go back to leveling this all out and panning. Let's check out these strums. Just for a point of difference, we might have mic two a little bit louder on this just to separate it from our other guitars. Just pan that out a bit for now. Okay, what else do we have in this section? We've got a lead guitar. So let's bring this up and pan it to the other side, try and balance things out a little bit here. Kind of like that. Mm, 
Let's come down to our dreamy guitar over here. Got a guitar and a riff for this section. So let's see what we can do with it. I'm liking Mike too, it's just a little bit more present. Let's see what the riff's doing. So we could pan those out left and right. The balance still feels kind of funny to me at the moment, but let's just leave it as is. Let's have a look at this glockenspiel. What's going on here? We've got two mics. Let's see if these are in phase. <laughs> these are not in phase. So let's drag this one over a little bit. That looks better. Let's just have the first mic a little bit more dominant than the second. It looks like it has a bit of better sustain. I'm just gonna leave this down to center for now. And we've got another Glock here, which is called Glock Pan. So it kind of goes from left to right. Let's bring in these vocals. So you can hear there's already a bit of room sound on the vocal. It's not a very cleanly recorded vocal. It was recorded in that big downstairs space at my parents' house. So it still sounds okay, but there's a bit of liveliness to it. So we just have to be aware of that when we're mixing and not compress it too hard to bring out the room sound. But let's keep going, bringing these harmonies. Pan these out a little bit. We've got some backing vocals. Double track, pan these out a bit. Bit of a low one. Let's just keep these center. Got everything kind of set up nicely. We might just do a couple more little um, routing things here to get a bit more control over some individual tracks here. So we're gonna bus our group guitar mics to separate buses as well so we can process those and don't have to worry about individually processing these multi mic amps. So let's grab our guitars, let's send our first guitar to bus 15, second guitar to bus 16. Let's send our strums to bus 17, our dreamy guitar to bus 18, our lead guitar to bus 19, our riff to bus 20, our two Glock mics to bus 21. Let's label these, we got guitar left, guitar right, strums, dreamy, lead, riff, Glock. Create track, it's dumped them all into my Glock group here. So let's just drag our guitars out up into our guitar group and just put them next to left and right. Take our strums above our strums, dreamy above dreamy, lead above lead, riff above riff, and our Glock, let's drag it out, drag it back in above our two Glock mics here. Great. Now that's just gonna make it easier for us to process those sounds that use multiple mics. What I might even do, we're gonna change all of those groups to mono, okay? So let's just click up the top here into a mono send. Now we're just gonna copy our panning and then center our tracks. So we're gonna do the panning on these so that we're not processing stereo tracks when we don't need to. It's gonna save a bit of CPU. Now let's check out our drums because there are some phase issues in our drums. All right, we're just gonna trim a bit of space off here so we can drag this stuff around. Now we're gonna zoom in on a snare hit to start with. Okay, we've got our snare mic up the top here. We're gonna make sure that our overheads down here line up with that. Might drag this one across the touch. I don't think we'll ever get this perfect, but we'll see how that sounds. Drag our overheads over, drag our hi-hats over. Let's hear how our snare and our cymbals overheads are sounding. Sounding a bit punchier now. Let's check out our kick. So the kick and the sample look pretty good. Our overheads. Usually I try and line this up here where the, the cross between the, the down and the up is. So we can see, we might just drag our kicks back a tiny little bit to get them a bit more in phase of our overheads. That 
That sounds pretty cool. Let's check out our toms real quick. Tom samples looking good, lined up nicely. Now this is our tom transient here on the overhead. So we're gonna need to drag our rack tom back, tom one, to line up with that a bit better. Looks pretty good. And then our floor tom, same thing. Let's find a clean floor tom hit so we can line this up better. And that's not very clear. The floor toms weren't hit very clear in this track. I think that, yeah, we can't really see any transient on the floor tom here. So it's a bit hard for us to do any kind of shifting here, but let's have a listen to it and see if it sounds okay. That sounds fine. So yeah, those strikes on the floor tom just aren't loud enough to be picked up in the overhead clearly. And any other time there's a floor tom here, it's got a rack tom at the same time. So we can't really decipher it. Those toms sound okay to me. So I think we're gonna be fine with them. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do for our session prep, cut out any silences so we can clearly see where some stuff comes in and out, makes it easier to navigate the session and something like that, looking pretty good. Once you've set your levels and got the panning and stuff set, do an export of that rough mix, just so you can come back and listen to that and just AB against it to make sure what you're doing is actually sounding okay. Okay, let's drop this in, let's mute that. And now we can check this every now and then. Okay, and another thing we wanna do before we get started is put our markers in at the top. So to do this in Logic, you press G to open up the, the global commands up here, press Control K to make a new marker up here, and then you just double click on it and type in the name. So we're just gonna go through and set all the sections out. Okay, now we've got that all set up. That's gonna help us as we do our automations and navigate through the session. So that's session prep, and now we're ready to start mixing. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the mix bus. We're just gonna add something on there, and then we're gonna take a look at the drums. Let's come over to our mix bus. You can see I've got a limiter on here. That's just for you guys so that nothing too loud peaks and clips on what you guys are hearing. At any given time, there's maybe a few little DBs getting cut down here, but it's mostly just to keep things under check for you guys listening along. We are going to add some compression to our mix bus. My usual go-to is either like the Waves SSL or the um, the Slate Digital SSL. Might go of Old Faithful today. Let's just go the SSL G comp from Waves. Gonna go with something like that for now. Just a three millisecond attack, 0.3 second release and two to one ratio. Just bouncing around a little bit, nothing too heavy handed. Just looking to kind of glue it all together. In VMR, I'm gonna put an EQ on the mix bus just to shape the mix a little bit. I'm not gonna do anything too aggressive here. Light little bit of shaping there. Let's check out our drums. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on my drum bus, I'm just gonna chuck a limiter on here. The L3 LL Ultra Maximizer from Waves. It's just been a go-to for me. I just like the way it sounds on the drum bus in the cozy warm setting. I just have this pulled down to about four and a half dB and I try and keep my drums hitting around here. And we don't wanna to get too heavy on the gain reduction here. So once we dial things in a little bit, we'll come back and check this and see how it's going and play with our levels a little bit. Now, before that, we're gonna put on VMR. So still on our drum bus here. I just have VCC there that just loads up, just adds a little bit of character to it. It's like an SSL desk kind of sound. And we're gonna do a little bit of parallel compression with the 1176, the blue one they have here, the modern. So let's dial this in a bit. We're gonna just sort of hit it a bit hard and then just pull this mix knob back. I like the second circuit and the high pass filter, just let some of that low end through. We're still in a slow attack, fast release, just kind of leaving that stuff as is. And it just gets the symbols and everything a bit more present, especially I find the symbols in this uh, kind of like sitting a bit subdued. So it's gonna help that stuff kind of come forward a little bit more. So we just get it moving a little bit around kind of like five dB of gain reduction. Now after that, we might chuck just some kind of just gluey compression. So 
let's just grab the slate digital gray, which is like an SSL kind of thing. Fairly fast attack, not the fastest. I don't really like that really pumpy, aggressive drum sound. Not for this kind of song anyway. Let's just go like a three to one ratio and our attack. Let's just leave it where it is, kind of medium. We want to let the transient through a little bit. Just pull back our high pass filter to around 40 Hertz and then let's just dial in the threshold. Okay, what we're gonna do is start dialing in these individual channels. So let's have a look at our kick mic. That kick is not a great sound. Not a lot of attack to the sound. Before leading into this, I did go in and I set up to have some samples. So if we need samples, we can blend them in. Okay, so let's just load up our Brainworks SSL. You could do this on the waves or anything else. Fast attack on the gate, kind of like a 0.3 release. I'm gonna drop it about 30 dB. Try and get it only reacting to the kicks. Maybe a touch of compression. Maybe a three to one kind of ratio. So we had the sample going then at the same time. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like on its own. So it's not very pretty. Let's try and cut some of this mud out while we're here. So around here, this 250 hertz, 200. Okay, we're just gonna do a big cut like that. Narrow band at about 380 hertz. Add in some top end with this 8K shelf. It's a slight improvement. Let's just blend that with our sample now and see how this is sounding. Bring out some more attack in the sample. Maybe around 2K. So this kick sample is one of um, a sample that I made. So I've got a bunch of samples that I'm about to release in a sample pack. So keep an eye out for that because there's some pretty cool sounds in there. Let's not overthink it too much. It's so easy to sit on a sound for a long time and just kind of like um and ah. I think that sounds pretty cool. We'll come back to it if we're feeling like it's an issue further down the mix. Let's go to the snare sound now. Okay, cymbals. Bit bleedy sounding. Let's just do some gentle gating on this. Maybe about 15, 10. Let's add some top end to this. It's very mid rangey this snare sound. I'm liking a tiny bit of 3K in there, big boost at 8K and a big boost at 180 Hertz. Just a little bit of this compression on here. So definite improvement. Let's put a clipper after the fact here just to catch some of these random peaks that are coming through. Little clipper. Somewhere around there is keeping us kind of level. If we wanted to, we could add Fab Filters Pro and B for some bleed suppression. I've got a preset for this, so if you want to check this out, go um, check out one of my videos on bleed suppression. You'll be able to find the settings that we're using in here. Basically just an expander on high frequencies, so every time the snare hits, it lifts the high frequencies and then drops them down so you don't get any cymbal bleed coming through, or will you at least minimize it. Let's blend in our samples. Big room sound. Now let's process our bus a little bit because there's a few samples here. If you start processing them all, it can get a little bit weird with phase and it can be hard to like shape the sound properly. So if we shape it where they're all meeting up, we're gonna get total control over it. So snare bus. Let's get this top end a little crackier. Cut some of this out. Yeah, it's better. Let's put some compression on the bus as well. Just a little bit. Four to one. Made it a little bit crisper, a bit brighter. 
already sounding heaps better. Let's check out these overheads. I can just hear some dirtiness in them. So I'm going to address that first. So just on our cymbals bus here, looking for this kind of stuff. Just going to do a small cut. I'm going to do a shelf boost from around three and a half K. I just feel like there's not a lot of excitement going on in these cymbals. Cut that kind of basketball honky sound in the middle here. Touch of compression. Now I don't want to cut heaps out of their heads. I want to keep them sounding natural enough that they, they sit in the drums nicely and add some fullness. That sounded pretty cool to me. I think we just need to address some harshness in these cymbals. Just a small cut around 7.8K. There's just some resonances there that are poking through, but if you cut them too much, the cymbals disappear. So they're kind of still important. So we just need to not take too much out of that. Not the greatest sounding room mic, kind of harsh sounding. Let's see if we can add some thickness to this maybe and just make it sound a bit nicer. So you see a lot of people, they like to aggressively compress room mics. I think you just have to be careful because if you do a fast attack, fast release, and you just slam it, a lot of time you end up with heaps of cymbal in there and it just becomes mostly like cymbal trash. So I still like a slower attack on um, room mics and just a little bit of compression. And if it's a good sounding room, you're got, not going to need to slam it too hard anyway. What you might do is put on the IOSYS DSR and use their overheads auto high compression setting for this to try and get rid of some of this harshness. Let's add a bit of reverb to this. Might try like the soft tube T-SAR. Go mono to stereo. That's actually pretty cool, straight out. So one second release time and just about 10% of mix there. Just add a little bit of body to that snare. Digging that, I think that sounds pretty nice. Let's check out our hi-hat. So that's going into our cymbal bus, but let's see if we can process this a bit further. I'm going to try and bring out some high end in this hi-hat. Not really liking around 4K, but we're bringing up a high shelf around 10K here to add some airy top end to these hats. And let's just see what else is happening here. Get rid of some of this mid-rangey stuff. Bit of a wide cut there. Bit of a CLA trick where we're gonna boost some of the low end in the snare in our hi-hat mic. Definitely getting somewhere now. Let's have a look at our toms. So let's find like this little jungly part. So there are our Tom mics. Let's see what we can do. Let's just grab the, the SSL channel strip again. Cut some dirt. Add some beefiness. Smack of that compressor. 
get the expander on here to kind of clean it up a little bit. Let's copy paste that over to our floor tom. Oof. Make this a bit narrower. That's pretty mean. Kind of feel like we need some 2K. Let's put some limiters on these toms as well, just to rein them in. Gets rid of a bit of that spiky sound that we've added with the high end frequencies that we've boosted. Rolls them off a little bit. So we can see the, the levels that these are being hit at, or the velocity is a bit inconsistent. So let's drag these over and try and even it all out a bit. Have a look at our samples. So some more samples from a sample pack that I'm working on. Um, these are ready to go. They don't really need anything done to them. So I actually like the sound of these better than the, the natural tom mics here, but we'll just bring our tom mics down and blend them into the sample until we've got the right balance of fullness and attack. Okay, let's hear this. Battery went flat for a moment there, so recharged camera battery, and now we're back in action. One thing to point out, I changed the compressor on the mix bus to the FG Grey in the Slate Digital Bundle. Just felt like this gave a nicer snap to the overall mix. Pretty much same settings. Now, I wanna add some parallel compression to these drums. Let's put our kick, and our snare, a decent amount of our toms, a little bit of our overheads and a bit of our rims into our parallel compression, our crusher bus. Bit of a preset that I have here. We're gonna load up the FG Bomber for some transient shaping, a little bit of a boost with a bell around 5.5K and a bit of a boost around 114 Hertz. So we're just kind of giving it a little bit of a scoop a slow attack and a medium release on the compressor here. And we're just gonna get a little bit of smack out of our drums with this. Just bringing a little bit of that in just to get the transient a little bit sharper and snappier on these drums. Let's do a similar thing to our crunch bus. So we're gonna add some saturation. So let's send our kick snare, bit of our toms in there. Not a lot. The toms, I don't really wanna hear the low end of the toms distorting. And bit of our cymbals, bit of our room. Mostly concentrating on the kick and snare here. So on this one, let's use Sound Toys Radiator. Bit of dirt, bit of kind of saturation to the sound. Let's turn this down and just blend it in. Just gonna go a bit of a slower attack on the drum bus compressor here. And let's just see what our limit is doing. Gonna put a bit of a trim after our compressor here on our drum bus. So the 1176 parallel compression we set up early on, just so we're not hitting the limiter too hard. All right, I feel like these drums are sounding pretty cool. Maybe we could just add a little bit of reverb to the whole kit, just a touch of room kind of sound. So we'll use a send here on our drum bus and let's use soft tube again. Oh, that was sounding pretty cool before. I don't really like the reflection sound in that. It's a bit slappy on the drums. Let's go with old faithful LX480 Essentials. Just a touch of that on there. Let's look at our tambourine really quickly. 
It's a bit messy sounding, but let's just high pass this a decent amount. Put a limiter, the L2 on here. Just catch those random transient peaks. The soft tube reverb on it this time. We'll go mono to stereo, see what we can do here. Just a little bit of that on there. Fairly short room kind of sound. Pan this off a little bit. Let's EQ this a little bit. Let's just pull up our SSL channel strip. We want to get more of that upper mid smack to it. Take out some of that ultra high frequencies out of the tambourine. I don't think this needs to be super loud. Just kind of an ear tickling kind of sound. All right, let's have a look at our bass. Let's see what we can do here. Let's just start with a little bit of compression on this. So let's give it some 1176 because it seems like it's got some pretty big dynamics going on here. Let's have a look at this big loud section here. Sounds like the, the pickups are a bit gritty on this. All right, I think we've got a good little squeeze going on the bass there. Let's have a listen to what the CLA bass does to it. It might be too subby. The CLA bass seems to add a lot of sub. Let's just get some EQ here, see if we can play around the tone a little bit. I think I want a bit of this presency boost. You can hear the bass is already a little bit gritty. Just cut a little bit around five, 600 hertz here. Boost around 3K. There's some scratchy frequencies there, but there's also some nice presence and this is played with fingers. So we're not gonna be able to pull out too much like trebly excitement out of the bass here. I think the bass needs to be kind of fat, full and meaty sounding, but we just need to make sure the tone is right and cuts through the mix. Just a touch of limiting on the end of this. Let's look at the loud section here. Let's add some side chain compression just to keep the kick and the bass happy together. Fast attack, fast release. Something like that. Let's get our rhythm guitar sorted. So we might just process the stereo bus here. I'm gonna pull out the, the Waves SSL for this one, just to mix things up. So I'm mostly hearing this low mid kind of woofiness. Gonna boost a little bit of 8K just to add a little bit more excitement. Little touch of compression. Cool, so we've made a bit more space in the mix now by pulling some of this low mids out. So we've done about six dB cut around 400 Hertz. Okay, maybe a little bit of a verb on this. Let's get a send going off our rhythm guitars and get some reverb on here. We might use Valhalla Vintage Verb and feeling something pretty short, maybe like 
0.6 seconds. Roll off some of that low end. Kind of like that, it's a bit slappy. Now let's pull it back. Around there sounds pretty good. All right, let's keep going. Let's check out these strum guitars that happen in our chorus. These sound pretty good. You get like a little cut around six, seven hundred hertz. Take a little bit of that top end out around five, six K. Might use a different compressor for this. Let's get the um, 1176 from UAD going. So maybe like the Rev A. It's a nice compressor, the, the blue stripe. I think we might do a little boost in the low end on this guitar. Just a tiny bit. Pan it out a bit further. All right, now let's have a look at this um, opposing lead guitar while we're here. Similar thing, pan it out a bit further. Get that separation going. All right, it's got the riff nice and level now. Sometimes it's good to just mix up your plugins to see if it gives you some creative edge. So let's try the Shep's Omni channel from Waves. It's like add some saturation. It feels like a nice high pass with a 6 dB octave. It's rolling off some of that kind of like woofy low end in this riff and kind of making it sit a little bit clearer. Kind of digging that. Mm -hmm. Tiny little touch of extra compression here in the end. I feel like we've just given it like some clarity and some distinction, which is sounding really cool. I think this needs some effects on it though. Just maybe some delay. We could try um, just putting a tape delay on it. Dotted Ape sounds kind of cool. U2 vibes. <laughs> What we might do here to kind of like, maybe add some sort of atmospheric space to this. We're gonna use a send off of this and gonna create track from that. We're just gonna put this into our lead guitars and just call this like lead verb. And then let's keep this mono. So we want this down the center of the mix, right? So even though our guitar is panned to the left, what we're gonna do is put a stereo reverb on this so that the reverb spreads out and it's not so directional by where the guitar is panned. So we're gonna get a nice full reverb sound across the stereo field. Then we're gonna have the lead guitar sitting off to the left and it's just gonna like fill the space out a bit more. So let's give this a try. So we'll use vintage verb again, mono to stereo. Kind of like that, it's a bit quirky, but um, in the background, I think that's gonna create some nice depth. Mm -hmm. 
We could even pan this reverb a little bit more to the other side. It's an old trick in the book, but it works well to kind of like spread your sound out when you're just working with a mono sound. All right, for now that sounds pretty cool, but I'll probably check this on some monitors later, make sure it's sounding all right. Let's go over to our bridge with our dreamy guitar. Let's see what's happening here. Might be able to do a similar thing with the reverb here to spread this guitar out a bit. I'm just gonna mute these vocals for a second. We can really hone in on what this guitar is doing. Thinking a small cut around eight, nine hundred hertz here. Little cut around 4K just to take out some sizzliness. Little boost at 8K again. Now let's do the kind of like pan reverb trick here to fill this space out a bit. It would have been good if this guitar was double tracked. So let's create a send, bring that back into our strums now. Let's just call this dreamy verb. All right, same thing, keep it mono. Let's try Universal Audio Galaxy Tape. Let's see if we can do something quirky with this. Not tempo sync sounds pretty good. Just the reverb only sounds pretty good though. We might just roll that so it's not too messy. Gonna hard pan this. Yeah, it sounds cool. All right, let's keep that in there. And we might just have to play with the level a little bit later, but I think that's okay for now. Let's mess around this lead riff in the bridge. Okay, so this definitely needs some delay on it. Let's get this going to ascend. Let's try like a, a memory man kind of delay. Get something a little bit dirty going. Echo boy, memory man style. I'm not sure about this. I think let's leave that muted for a second. Let's just put the delay straight on the track. Let's try copying over this Shep's channel that we set up and see how this goes. Just cleans up that low end. It's a bit woofy sounding. So that um, high pass filter and the saturation, little boost in the high end here is it's making it sound nice. Blends in with the track way better. Okay, let's use this send that we made before and do a similar thing with our reverb. We'll go a fairly clean reverb for this. Let's grab vintage verb, put it on the, the now setting for color. Just like one second kind of thing. Roll off the low end to about 300 Hertz. Slight off center pan there. This is sounding cool. Okay, I think that's all of our guitars. Let's have a look at our Glockenspiel. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I think what we need to do is maybe like limit this a little bit. We don't want to kill the transient, but let's just get it under check. Let's just get L2 on here. I kind of like that, even though it's, it's hitting it pretty hard, it's just rounding out that kind of harshness to the transient and it's keeping the Glock kind of even sounding. Let's use VMR, see if we can add some of that airiness back in. That's kind of cool. 
Let's get a high pass filter on here. We don't need a lot of low end out of this. There's something in these upper mids that I'm not liking. We'll boost the air, cut around 7K. High pass filter. Let's pan this off a little bit. Now I feel like this needs some effects on it. Maybe a touch of echo. A little bit of a reverb. Let's just get a send going off of this. So off of our Glock bus, we're gonna set up a reverb send. Vintage verb again. Definitely a tricky sound with the reflections in the reverb. Not loving it. Let's find a different reverb. Maybe our soft tube. Nope, not a fan of that. Let's go chroma verb. Just a little bit of that. Transient designer. Let's try that. I don't know if we've done much to this sound. I think it just sounds the way it sounds. And some sounds are like that. Maybe we need to compress this. Let's grab our 1176 so we can get a bit aggressive with it. Fast attack, fast release. Let's see what we can do. Maybe an all in. Oh, buttons mode kind of sounds cool. Leave it around there for now. Don't want to spend too much time on that, like we just did. Now let's have a look at this stereo panning one. Let's take our compressor settings onto this. Change it to stereo. Get our echo settings on here to stereo. Let's go silver verb. Want it to be a little bit ambient sounding. Just gonna cut a little bit at 7.8K there. Just sounds a little harsh to me. So let's have a look at some vocals now. With the golden mane. So you can hear there's a lot of room sound in this vocal. Recorded in a big room, tiled floors, brick walls, had a little bit of a vocal booth thing going, but it didn't really do that much. So vocals still sound all right, but we just gotta be careful that we don't bring too much of this out when we add some compression. Now let's just see how far we can take this. Gonna get some 1176 on here, just four to one. Rev E seems to add some nice thickness to vocals. So let's bring this in and get this vocal Nice and full sounding. In the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. Oh, in the young days when we became the kids in the jungle, the good and pretend. That's kind of like where the bulk of this room slappy stuff's happening around six to eight hundred hertz. So do a little cut there, high pass filter. Already sounding better. Let's put some de esser on here because it is sounding a little harsh. I can't remember what vocal mic this was, but it's obviously not super pretty coming in through the pre Sonus preamps either. Let's go with our Waves Sibilance. That's a pretty cool one. Oh, in the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. Oh, in the young days. So we're going to add a second level of compression here, the LA2A. So we're gonna make sure the vocal sounds nice and warm. And we're not gonna do too much actual compression with this because we don't wanna bring out that room sound. Oh, in the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. Oh, in the young days. Let's add maybe some saturation to the end of this. So maybe satin. Oh, in the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in. So let's try a little trick here with satin. 
the dynamics knob here is actually pretty clever. So maybe we can remove some of this unwanted reverb. He's oh in the young days when we became the kids in the jungle that couldn't be tamed. Not bad. Just a little bit of that I think is going to help out. Oh in the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. Oh I'm actually digging a little bit of drive on this vocal. Kind of making it a bit more interesting, isn't it? Oh, in the young days when we became the kids in the jungle that couldn't be tamed. Little bit of um, chorus on our vocal here. Might just pull the mix knob back a touch on our satin plug-in. Okay, there's a little bit of harshness in the um, the upper mids on our vocal here. Maybe a little bit of like multi-band compression will help out. Let's add a little bit of reverb and delay to our vocal. Just to put in a better space in the mix. I think I'm gonna go with like some sort of slap delay on the vocal here. So Sound Toys is always nice for that. So Echo Boy and pretty much just the first preset on here is pretty good for a slap delay. Oh, in the young days when we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. Oh, in the young days when we became- Crank the saturation. Who doesn't love a bit of saturation? Oh, This is sounding pretty cool. Let's grab a touch of reverb on here as well. <laughs> so I saw a post the other day from someone and they said, never use more than three reverbs in a mix. Guys, don't listen to everything that you see online. Maybe even including from me. Just, you can use as many reverbs as you want. If it sounds cool, it sounds cool. If it sounds bad, it sounds bad. Don't limit your creativity and your imagination that we're mixing by someone saying, you should only have three reverbs in a mix. No, just, Go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna use the the Verb Suite Classic on the vocals. Usually the plate sound is quite nice on this. We'll put a little bit of de before it. You guys know that I like a little bit of de before my vocal bus reverb. Just, yeah, it sounds pretty good off the get go. Might just take the length down a touch. Maybe turn the pre-delay up for a little bit of slappiness with the reverb as well. Let's get these harmonies dialed in. So female voice here. Okay, let's just bring our compression over. Let's just grab Pro Q3. Gonna pull some mids out of the, the harmony. I don't think we really need DSing on this, but let's just copy over sibilance. Now let's copy these settings to the next vocal. Running. There's something weird going on in this upper mids. Running. That's just such a yucky sound, isn't it? Running. It's probably a mixture of the mic, preamps, and vocal tuning, and it's just made it. Yeah, a bit yuck. So that's fine. It's a backing vocal, so we don't have to worry too hard. Maybe we'll use a retro color on this and add some space to it. A bit of reverb. Take out the noise. Take out the wobble. All of this stuff. We don't need that. Maybe a little bit of drive. A bit less of that. Turn this down. Kind of want these to be a little bit spacious sounding. Running, diving into the Pull them back a little bit in the mix. Running. I dig it. Now, we're gonna grab all our vocals and do a send, and we're gonna load up 
some micro shift. So create track, we're gonna get this into our vocal bus. So in our group here, so let's label this micro shift, basically like some chorus and some stereo width to the sound. So we're just gonna blend this in with the track and then kind of boost it more in the chorus, especially cause we don't have any double track vocals. We wanna like kind of emphasize the chorus a bit and add something a bit more exciting to it. So sound toys, micro shift. I think I've got like a setting in here, spin light vocal double. Now let's just send these in 100%. And then we can just control the level with our send here. It's kind of cool, adds a bit of effect to it. Let's see what it sounds like in the verse. I reckon we just dial it back for the verses. Maybe take it down to like minus 15, do a big jump up for the chorus and then drop it back down for the next verse, minus 15. And that'll do, let's check that out. Just pull those effects back a little bit. Whatever you set it to, you're always going to want to pull it back a little bit extra later. So I think that sounds a bit better. You always come back and go, whoa, reverb, delay. What was I thinking? Let's check out our backing vocals. We might just jump to the end here because we've got backing vocals throughout most of the song in the chorus, in the bridge, in the outro. So let's just loop the outro, pull a bit of a sound here and then see how it's translating across all these other sections of the mix. Gonna copy paste our compression, get some high pass filter on these. There's something unpleasant about the air of this microphone, isn't there? It's not very sweet, it's kind of grating. Low vocal. A little cut in those low mids there. Just some of this stuff. A little boost of the air. Let's just put a touch of chorus on these. So just a little bit, 6%, keep it mono. Maybe for the ones that are down the center, change it to mono to stereo, but we've got a double track here, left and right, and then our low and our harmony female voice there. Same deal, let's get micro shift on these vocals too. So create another bus, drop it in here, and let's just copy paste that over. Make sure it's a stereo send, drag this over, send these in. Might be pretty generous with this. Kind of makes it sound like there's more voices involved, which is cool, which is what I want to create here. Just gonna muck around and put retro color on our backing vocal bus and just see if we can add something fun to this. Ooh. Little touch of this is cool. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see what this sounds like in the bridge. Just gonna do like some multiband compression on these low mids. Just something like that, just to kind of rein them in and keep them under control. So let's have a look, what is happening now? What have we got left to look at in our mix? I don't think there is anything. There is just now maybe some levels, maybe some extra effects that we can add. Okay, let's just do some little automations to help make our chorus pop. So just things like bringing down the verses a smidge, 
make sure the chorus hits a little bit harder and just look at things where we can try and make some improvement across the mix and if there's any places where we can automate things in and out. This mix, it seems like a lot of the sounds can be sort of set in their place. So I don't think we're gonna need huge amounts of automation here. But for starters, let's go over to our drum bus here and let's just add some volume automation. So let's bring our verse down like about one and a half dBs. And then when verse two hits, let's drop it down and we'll see how this sounds if it doesn't sound too jarring or like someone's just turned it down. The rest of it I think can kind of stay where it is. So let's just grab that. Let's just cut and paste this across our groups. So the reason I'm not just doing this on my mix bus is so that it hits the compressor differently as things get louder, rather than if you just like automate the mix bus, it's just gonna sound like someone's just turning it up and down. Whereas this will just react a bit differently with the compressor as things hit it a bit harder. And it also means that I can change the volume of certain instruments in certain sections. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as that one and a half dB drop and see how that sounds. These drums are only in the chorus, so we don't need to automate that. Lead guitars, don't need to automate that. Glock, don't need to automate that. So let's do our vocals. Let's see how this sounds. Definitely hits a little bit harder in the chorus. Let's see if we can boost up maybe like this snare roll into the chorus for a bit of excitement. Maybe that drum section. We could just boost some, some of our crunchy radiator signal. Pretty cool. And maybe even like just some more room sound, even like through that whole tom section. Just a little bit. It's kind of cool. Let's just cut and paste that for the next section. Boost our radiator again up here. The thoughts and the feelings, the story, the meaning. So I added revival to the drum bus to just bring in a little bit of um, sparkle to the top end. Something about these cymbals is really hard to get them to come through in the mix. Maybe it's just the way they're played or it's just the type of cymbals with the, the mics and all that stuff, but this has brought a bit of life to them. Maybe we can boost up our drum reverb a little bit here. So that little stop there, I feel like we need some kind of reverb or delay on that last guitar hit. So let's set this up. Let's just grab our vintage verb. You know, something even just like that on that very last hit. So we're going to automate this one. Obviously not as heavy. Breaking. Yeah, that's cool. Just so that section's not so dead. And the way that chorus hit just sounds super flat to me. Just not exciting at all. just like sounds boring as. So I think we need to add maybe some sort of sample or like a reverse cymbal or like another crash or something, just something over the top of it. So when it hits, we're like, oh yeah, there's the chorus. Cause at the moment it's just sounding a little bit boring. So I'm gonna grab a sample. I'm gonna grab one of my samples that I've been working on. So I've been working on some cymbal samples and these are gonna be like one shot cymbal hits and swells and reverse symbols. Kind of like you never ever need a reverse symbol again. So we might grab something like this. Okay, so I've just grabbed like a reverse symbol swell hit and we're gonna try and get this to help the chorus impact a little bit harder. We'll see if it sounds any good anyway. Might be a fail. Fair bit shorter, I think. I reckon that's working pretty cool. So it sounds like without the swelling, but just a cymbal hit. That's actually not bad either. Just cut off the fade in. That just helps it punch a little bit harder. And even when the chorus hits, if we just do like a little automation boost, just for like the impact. Just need this chorus to hit harder. Where's our guitars? Boost these up for a moment. 
All right, let's see that again. Yeah, that's sounding a bit more exciting now. We're gonna automate the hi-hats a little bit just because there's sections where the crash is coming through and it sounds a bit nasty. So let's bring up any section with actual hats to zero and then we'll just drop this all back down about 10 dB. Okay, so there's lots of little hat sections throughout this song. Right, let's pull this down. So we've got the crash on those sections, the hats coming through in, the, in between the crashes, and yeah, we've taken out some of that harshness that was bleeding through on that hi-hat close mic. Now I was feeling like on the mix bus, maybe adding a bit of tape. It's like digital virtual tapes machine. I'm gonna go 15, just to smooth out the top end a bit. The second tape type, I'm gonna turn the noise reduction all the way down and play with this bass alignment a little bit. Tape's kind of rounded out those harsh transients like on the snare. The vocals feel a bit warmer now. I'm liking how this is sounding. I like the, the glueiness of the auto. It sounds nice. I think I'm going to go with that for now. It feels like it's kind of holding the mix together a bit nicer than the, the 0.3 second release. Now this little section here in the pre-chorus, I think we're gonna put a bit of an effect on the vocal, maybe like that kind of megaphony, distorted kind of sound. Kids in the jungle, the good and Copy paste our settings, just call this effects vocal. Just get rid of the chorus. And I'm just gonna use the waves CLA effects. You can usually get something out of this that I like. And I think we need like some kind of echo after this. So even if it's just that last word, let's just duplicate this track again, cut out this last word, paste it down here and turn the delay up to 100% and dry down to zero. I mean, maybe we could do this with um, some ping pong delay. So let's do a ping pong quarter notes. 100% wet, boost the saturation, get a bit dirty, more feedback. Maybe we could add some more tape phase to this or like some chorus. Just to make it a bit weirder. And then maybe, maybe a little bit of reverb on here. That's kind of cool. Now let's turn this down. And I think we should just reuse that for the next pre-chorus. And similar thing, get this echo on the last word. Maybe we fade it up. I'm feeling like leading into this chorus, we got to add like a cymbal swell or something. It's kind of big, long gap. Nothing really exciting happens leading up into it. So let's put our swell in, see how this goes. I think that's cool. It just makes the gap a bit more exciting, a bit of anticipation that the chorus is coming. Okay, so we're just gonna do some headphones off, listening out the monitors, make some final tweaks, try and get this across the finish line and see how it sounds. So I'm gonna push it into a limiter a bit harder now. Alright, so the computer had a bit of a meltdown. Uh, I was running out of space while trying to screen catcher. And so I think I lost a little bit of information on what I was doing. So I'll just run you through some little edits that I did to the mix. And I think that we are pretty much done. So on our mix bus, we added the soft tube tape. So nothing crazy going on here. 30 IPS, just pushing the amount of color. Got a little cut at 232 hertz, kind of like a wide bell here, minus 0.6 dB on the mix bus. Following that up with some high frequency compression from 15 kilohertz upwards with the um, SSL Fusion HF compressor. Then we've got our 
clean dehash. So just a little setting I like to use with the Brainworks refinement plugin. So it just kind of rains in on those upper mids where it gets a little harsh sounding. We've got a little cut at 6.5 kilohertz, some harshness in the cymbals and vocals, and a little bit of multiband compression at around 430 hertz here. Then we've got Pro-Q 3, just a little cut, 1.75 dBs at 432 hertz, and a little bit of a cut at 7.7. K-Clip, just doing some light clipping over the mix. Just Max doing about 1 dB of clipping. And then the we've got Ozo 9 on the limiter. And then following that up with Pro L2. So just to get a bit extra juice out of the track. So that's kind of like our mix master kind of thing going on at the moment. And then some little changes through the mix that we made. On the bass, we cut a little bit of sub out and a little bit of the low mids and just boosted some upper mids. Guitars, just cut some mids. On the vocal bus, we just added the baby audio with the um, top end cleanup setting. When we became caught in the hedge and caught in the maze. And a second round of DSing on our lead vocal. When we became the kids. On our drum bus, we just put a high pass filter around 33 hertz. Trying to get the kick under control a bit more. Ended up just muting the kick mic. It's just a bad kick sound. Have a listen to it again. We could chuck a throw delay on the vocals just there. Automate this in. Okay, so I'm feeling like this is pretty much done as far as I can take it for the time being. Now, it would definitely be a good idea to come back to this with fresh ears later and just see if anything jumps out and make some changes and go from there. But as far as our initial mix goes, I'm feeling like this is sounding pretty good and we've done a good job. Let's have a quick listen to the raw tracks again and then have a listen to our mix and see if we're happy with where it's landed. Definitely made the track a lot more exciting, added a bit more character to it. Even though there was a few issues in the mix, we still got it to a good place. And I think the only way that we could get this a little bit better is if we went back in time and we recorded this with some better gear in a better studio environment. But overall, I think the outcome has been pretty good. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with how that's sounding. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and learn a couple of things along the way. Make sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done it yet and you're interested in doing so, go to the description below and go and purchase the multi-tracks so you can have a go at mixing this track as well. Make sure you stick around for the next video where I'll show you some tips on how to get a tighter low end in your mix. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.